Sorry I'm late, sir. I was on the field when you phoned me. Right. You've been suggested as the battalion liaison officer to the committee planning the annual Navy Relief Ball. Sir? Come on, Rice. I'm busy. Yes or no? I'd be glad to be of some help to you, sir, but... You see, in view of my... Well, my limited experience in this area... I... Well, you'll have experienced guidance. The full committee is meeting in the small banquet room right now. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Rice. Ladies, this is Lieutenant Rice, and he's going to see that we have sufficient manpower to decorate our gymnasium for the dance. How do you do, ladies? I'm Martha Amory, Lieutenant, and, well, I won't stop to introduce everyone now, but I hope you see a few familiar faces. Yes, uh, Mrs. Everest and her husband are old friends of mine. Hello, Bill. Hi, Jan. How are you? I'm not so sure yet. <laughs> well, Martha, I don't know how much time I'll be able to give. My teaching schedule is very heavy this year. Well, Doris, I... this is important. I know it is. I just wanted to let... Well, not just for the dance. It doesn't hurt your husband's career for his wife to be on an important committee or two. Oh, come off it, Sissy. I, 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 you know, I, ladies, ladies, well, come on, it's absolutely Sissy. true. I, don't panic. We're noisy, but not dangerous. Lieutenant Rice, I realize that you have other work to do. Um, Suppose I appointed one woman that you could uh, report to. Would that be easier? Mm -hmm. I'll be glad to volunteer. Well, Sissy, since, uh, since Jan and Lieutenant Rice are old friends, maybe it would be easier if I appointed Jan. Fine. Do you have materials as well as men, Lieutenant? Plants, crepe paper, that sort of thing? Well, we have some decorations here at the club. I'll have to find out what they are. Jan, why don't you go along with him and see if there's any crepe paper, would you? You mean artificial flowers? Why not? Coffee? No, thanks, Jan. I, uh, I better run. You sure? I keep a pot brewed all the time for the girls. Only they don't come to drink coffee, they come to talk. And talk and talk and talk. We could out-filibuster Congress. Maybe I should have married a civilian. No, I hear it's the same out there. Some of them never have all of this. Don't you forget, Barry's just getting started. If night maneuvers don't finish him, Poor man barely drags himself home to sleep. Yeah, to a home-cooked meal. I drag myself a long, long way for a home-cooked meal. Okay, Lieutenant, okay. You don't have to hit me on the head. Now, Jan, I didn't mean that. Besides, I have to meet the guys at the grog shop and... You play it safe with married women, Lieutenant. Now, Jan, it's not just that. It's just that... Well, with Barry not here, I, uh... Now, listen, I know a lot about small towns like this. I know also quite a bit about neighbors. You could do a lot for my morale, Lieutenant. Sir, by saying that you were afraid to come in because I was so seductive and devastating. OK, OK, we'll say that, all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll make it some other time when Barry can walk you in the front door. That's a deal. Bill? Thank you. You saved me from what might have been a deadly afternoon. Bye, Jen.
wife and four children who had his house burned down. Let's not forget they'll need furniture, too. Shouldn't we mark all this Navy relief or something? Well, what difference does it make as long as the family gets it? Uh-oh, I've got to run. I'll just about make it before my class gets there. You know, I envy you. Your job, I mean. Why don't you talk to Barry? Explain to him. Bye-bye, girls. Bye, Doris. Thanks for coming, dear. Can we call it a day? I don't see why not. We're almost through and everybody's tired. Boy, you are in a rush. Where do you want me to drop you? Home. I mean, you're not going out? New hairdo? New dress? No. Just thought I'd do myself differently. Break the monotony? Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Kids for coming. Listen, can't we stop somewhere and have a cool drink and a chat? Good old-fashioned chat, you know. Sissy, I'm all talked out. Thank you, Sissy. Well, what's the rush? You could invite us in for coffee. I could tell you all about Captain Millard's wife. They were having a dinner party for his battalion commander, and... Sissy, please. Sissy, I think we've cut into Jen's day deeply enough. Come on. I'm sorry, Sissy. It's just that I'm very tired, and I've... you too. Hello, Lieutenant. Everybody just arriving or leaving? Leaving. By popular request. What was that all about? Nothing. Come in. Maybe I better drop these things off and leave, huh? Bill, you can carry this fresh just two pots. Now cut me, please. Watch. I'm going to have the first daylight drink of my life. What happened? Nothing. It never does. You know something? I would rather risk all the gossip they can muster than put up with it for one more hour. <laughs> well, I still don't get it put up with what? With nothingness. With Sissy Van Austin, with a world where a floral arrangement takes on earth-shaking importance, and coffee is the life's blood. Well, there's no law that says you have to get mixed up in it, is there? I mean, there are other things to do. Like what? Housework? All right. You find me some housework to do. I can clean this place in one hour. Have you ever seen a spotless jail? I even clean the clean. Oh, come on, Jan. You're losing your sense of humor. Mm-hmm. You bet I am. All of a sudden, I am all coffee clutched out. I am all partied out, I am all committed out, and I haven't one inch of humor left. Bill, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to use you as my wailing wall. That's a penalty, a, a privilege. It belongs to a husband. Just be a good friend. Sit down and... Have one drink with me. <laughs> okay, one. I feel better already. Just letting off steam. That's good for you. I need someone to talk to, Bill. Or talk at. You don't even have to answer intelligently. Just grunt or something so I know you're there. Or so I know I'm here. I guess that's mostly it so that I know I'm here. You know, Bill, we women start out the same way you do. We grow up with the same daydreams about doing really important, exciting things, and then one day we look around and there's just a shadow there, a shadow with a broom in her hand. The dreams are gone. We're gone. There's just a shadow and a broom. Ooh. That's enough of that. <laughs> hey, Bill, stay for dinner. We'll open a bottle of wine. No, Jan, I, uh, I guess I better not. Please, Bill. 
Jan. But we're old friends. I'm asking you to stay because I need company. Why can't a man and a woman have a normal friendship without everybody worrying it to death? I don't know. I guess that's just the way it is. Well, let's us not make a federal case out of it, hmm? Barry should be home in 45 minutes. And the invitation's from both of us, hmm? And if it makes you feel any better, we'll stand in the doorway, arm in arm, waving you a fond farewell, just for the neighbors. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. I had no way of knowing he wouldn't show up. But at least he always called before. Sometimes a guy just doesn't get the chance. I don't care so much about myself, but I think I've put you in kind of an embarrassing position, haven't I? No, Jan, I'm, I'm more worried about you. Yes, but you... <laughs> after you, Alphonse. <laughs> and after you, Gaston. No, no, you, Alphonse. <laughs> Well, it, uh, it was delicious. I really should go now. Whatever you say, Lieutenant. Well. Now, for goodness sakes, don't sneak. Nothing looks guiltier than a man sneaking mm -hmm. out. And don't you worry about it. <laughs> Good night, Jan. Thanks again. Good night, Bill Rice. Thank you. Five. Be daylight soon. Mm. Oh, well, I'm creaky. Why didn't you go to bed? I wanted to see if I could still recognize my husband. There's a great steak waiting. Just take a minute. I'm too tired to eat it, honey. Maybe tomorrow night, huh? You want me to rub your back? Thanks anyway, honey. Something hot to drink? <clears throat> I'm sorry about not calling. I couldn't get to a phone. You missed an old friend tonight. We had a guest for dinner. Well, who? Bill Rice. Oh, that's too bad. How is he? Fine. We had dinner together. Just Bill and me in the candlelight. He's a nice guy. 
Glad you had somebody to talk to. He's a very attractive man. Bill? <laughs> yeah, I guess he is. Aren't you at least a little bit jealous? <laughs> sure. Outraged. Barry, I'm your wife. Don't you care who I'm with or what I'm doing? Honey, could we talk about it in the morning? Huh? Don't have to take me for granted. Okay, I'll be mad about it. But in the morning, huh? Barry, may maybe I get tired, too, in a different way. Honey, want me to punch Bill Rice in the nose? Okay, where are my shoes? <laughs> okay, Atlas. You've been holding the world on your shoulders all day. You deserve a rest. You're a good girl, Jan Everest. Now hurry up and come to bed, huh? You slave master. Try Brand X. Not as good, but it's a lot cheaper. Well, I don't even know what it's for, but it's right here in my list. See that? <laughs> Barry, we're sorry you missed you last night. Yeah, me too. Poor man. He barely knew his own name by the time he got in. I know that feeling. Believe me, many of the times I've climbed up and down those hills at Camp Pendleton. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Right. Romance at the Commissary. A loaf of bread, a jug of floor wax, and oh, baby, thou. Huh? Oh, hi. It's like old home week, or a committee meeting. I saw Bill Rice a minute ago. Yes, I saw him, too. Uh, nothing for me, thank you. I don't really want anything to drink. I, I just wanted to talk to you for a little while, that's all. Oh? Unfortunately, I wasn't the only one who saw Bill Rice and you together. Sissy did, too. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Now, now, Jan, before you start telling me to mind my own business, which you have a perfect right to do, you know how fond I am of you, don't you? Hmm? And I don't want you to get hurt. And, well, Sissy talks too much. About what? About Lieutenant Rice and you. I just happened to bump into Bill a few minutes ago. I don't see where that... Jen, I know that, but yesterday, he just happened to drop by the house, too, when we were there, and... Oh, honey, I know there's nothing to it, and you're perfectly innocent, but... Well, if there is anything that Sissy likes better than herself, it's to gossip, and you know that. But as far as I am concerned, Sissy has anything Jen, to say about listen, me. Listen, sweetie. Does Bill have a girlfriend? Plenty, I imagine. Then why don't you call one of them or, or find someone attractive that you think he'd like and have a dinner party? Sweetie, fight fire with fire. Let the whole world know that you and Barry are entertaining Lieutenant William T. Rice and his girlfriend. You know, sometimes an ounce of prevention is worth a whole pound of explanation, isn't it? Okay. Bye. And 
one of them stopped the other one, he says, Beetle. And the other one says, Squash it. I hear the girls have really planned quite a dance for us, Barry. Oh, well, to tell the truth, Major, I don't know very much about it. I've been on night exercises for the past couple of weeks. Oh. You see, Paula, uh, Martha and Jan are on the committee for the dance, a Navy relief ball. I went last year. We did. How'd you like it? Fine. Bill, I've been wanting you and Paula to meet for ages. Paula, did you tell Bill how we met? Remember that terrible weekend in Norfolk? With the, the crazy taxi driver and the kids from Miami U? <laughs> Do you remember it? Yes, it was funny, wasn't it? <laughs> how long have you and Bill known each other, Barry? Oh, we met back at the academy. Oh, I didn't know you went to Annapolis. It's a beautiful place. Yes, it is. When were you there? Uh, two years ago. Barry and I were married there, right after graduation. We had the capes, the swords, the full treatment. Yes, Jan was trying hard not to break into a big grin when she passed under our swords. Big grin? You were shaking so much, I thought you were going to drop the sword and cut the wedding now, short. Now, come on, I wasn't shaking. I was trying to hold in a laugh. After all, you didn't have to whisper student prince when you passed by. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help it. You looked just like you came out of an operetta. Very good. Well, why don't you all retire to the drawing room? And I'll clear the table. And Barry can put it away and we'll have a little more room. I'll help you clear. Let me do it, Martha. I'm not much on conversation anyway. Thanks, Joe. Mm-hmm. Why don't you help Barry with the table and put your engineering to some use? <laughs> what she really wants is to have you all to herself. She can talk to oh, me anytime. <laughs> that was a good dinner, huh? Mm -hmm. Paula's a very beautiful girl. Yes, she is. Another example of Jan's fine taste. <sighs> You're very fond of Jan, aren't you? We're good friends. I'm sure you are. All I have to do is stack the dishes and then pray that my fairy godmother comes in the middle of the night to do them. Otherwise, Lieutenant Rice, you might find yourself on KP duty tomorrow when you bring the proofs of the dance car designs. I forgot to tell you, Jan, I'm, uh, I'm covering his OD tomorrow. Oh? I'll see they get delivered, though. I, I won't hold up the committee. Well, that's that. Anybody here for poker? Uh, Penny Annie, of course. No, Why not? It's wonderful. Idea I've heard tonight. Marvelous idea. Only you won't need the table again. <laughs> oh, me and my big mouth. Come on, Barry. I'll help you get it this time. Still on field exercises. Just thought I'd drop in and have a cup of coffee. Good. All right, watch this way. I'll try to <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Steak fight tomorrow evening, Jan. A lot of the officers and wives are dropping by. Sounds great, but uh, Barry's in the field for another week. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I'll see you next time, then. Thank you, Lily. Hi, Jan. Anything wrong? No, just having some coffee. You want some? Oh, no, I, uh, I'm up next. Oh. See you. Yeah, see you. Bill? One cup, please. 
Look, Jan. Want me to confess? I saw your car outside, and that's why I came in. Bill, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just can't take being alone anymore. I hate doing this, but I don't understand it. Jan. The other wives seem to handle it all right. Martha Emery, uh, Doris Broxton. Almost everyone I know is reasonably happy. And I'm vegetating. It's not that I'm bored. I'm just lost. Oh, Bill, I'm sorry. It's, it's not fair to make you listen to all this. I just wish there was something I could do to help you, Jan. I need a friend, Bill. We're friends. No. Friends don't have to keep worrying about how it looks to other people. And I'm just making it worse by coming here. Small people and small minds. They don't seem to realize that a man and a woman can be friends with them. I better go. Do you want to? No. No, I don't. I know I shouldn't be in your way here, but this is an emergency. Oh, what is it, sissy? Well, Jan asked me to get in touch with you. About the big emblem to hang over the doorway for the dance. I've already checked the sign shop. It'll be ready on time. I better get back to my platoon. Well, now, the brush off, huh? You're really serious about her, aren't you? Sissy, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on, Bill. Don't be such a stick. You can trust me. You told Barry yet? Have I what? You're going to have to tell him sometime. I can't say that I blame Jan a bit. Somebody else be a little jealous? That's out of line. Well, if you want to live dangerously, that's your business. What was that all about? Nothing. A comedian. What's your pleasure? Then I left college and I came to California. <laughs> Lieutenant? Oh, please, don't get up. How are you, Paula? Fine, thank you. I'm afraid I'm trespassing. When I was a lieutenant in Panama, you know, we had a place of our own like this. Would you care to join us for a drink, Major? Well, uh... Maybe I'd better powder my nose or watch the dark game. Thank you, Paula. Sir? Right girl. Yes, sir, she is. Could I buy you a drink, sir? Scotch for the major. 12-year blend. The kind he orders on the occasions when he'll take a drink. Well, I didn't realize you two had met before, Lily. We haven't. How are you, Major Amory? I'm Lily. Hello. <laughs> was, uh, was this a guess? I'm a storehouse of inconsequential trivia. <laughs> Who people are, what they drink, what they eat. I built a business on it. No, 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 no. This is just to say hello. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. Don't mention it. 
Oh, you were saying, sir? Uh, <clears throat> you were saying, sir? What? Oh! <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to talk to you, uh, unofficially. Now, the first thing I want you to know is that, uh, normally, I keep strictly hands off the personal lives of my fellow officers. But I figure they deserve at least one word of caution before they break their necks. Yes, sir. You're getting yourself into something that uh, could be nasty. Now, I'm, I'm not suggesting that a, a military post is any different than any other collection of people, or that there's any more gossip than any town the same size. But there's not any less, either. Sir, if you're referring to Mrs. Everest... And I'm assuming that your friendship is perfectly innocent. Thank you, Major. Thank you. Is that all, sir? That was a girl, Bill. A long time ago. Married, a couple of kids. I knew her husband. She and I were great pals. She told me all her troubles. I don't see what's so blasted surprising about that. There were women around when I was a lieutenant. Yes, sir. Anyway, I... I was flattered. This... marvelous woman that had turned to me as sort of a... big brother. Except it didn't remain a simple friendship. I don't think it ever does. Sir, if you're suggesting that something has happened between Jan and me... I'm suggesting that you do exactly what I did when I found out where we were heading. What was that, sir? Run like a thief. Bill. <laughs> well, didn't you expect me? Well, no. Barry asked me to stop by. Oh? Anything special or just a visit? Beats me. Is that Bill? I'll be right out. Would you like some coffee or something? Oh, not for me, thanks. Hi. Hi, Barry. Just got back myself. Rugged day. Drink? <laughs> no, thanks. You, hon? Uh, no, I don't think so. Well, we've got a problem. Might as well talk about it. Get it out in the open. I've been hearing talk about the two of you. It's... It's not nice talk. I... Look, wait. Let me finish, huh? I don't know what to make of it. it... Well, I trust Jan. I, I trust you. This sort of thing never would have come into my mind if... Well, anyway... If there is anything to it, I... I better know for sure. I don't even know at this point if I'm supposed to punch you in the jaw or give you my blessings or what. But I better know for sure. We've been friends for a long time. Will you believe what I say? What you've heard is just talk. It's, uh, it's Sissy Van Austin's own special brand of, of creating excitement on an otherwise dull base. In short, it's nothing. I like Jan. I, I think she's a wonderful girl. And I like you, Barry. I'm just an old friend of the family who's put us all in a rather stupid spot and... Uh, I apologize for it. Nothing. 
Nothing. Okay. Okay. Now, you tell me. There's nothing to tell. Okay. Enough said. Don't forget the whole thing, huh? Again, sorry, Barry. See you, Bill. See you. Jen? Okay, so I finally became the jealous husband. You want to shoot me? No. Oh, God, isn't this wild? I'm shaking inside just because of Sissy's imagination. It wasn't all her imagination. Some of it did happen. Coffee together, quiet talks. He even held my hand once. But he held it the way he grabbed the hand of someone who's drowning. I don't understand that. I'm I... drowning, Barry. This all came about not because of Bill, but because of you. You, the Marine Corps, this base, the people. Well, honey, I... I can't do it anymore. I won't do it anymore. I didn't even know myself until this minute. But it's all over, Barry. I don't want to be married anymore. <laughs> Martha, Maggie. Hi, dear. I, I brought Maggie along, too. I hope you don't mind. No. You know, just in case I had some questions on what's been done, I could ask them right here. Sure, come in. I'm sorry to see you go, Jan. One of those things. It's all there. Thank you, Maggie, for taking over for me. Why not? What with raising two children, going to my extension courses, and writing my great short stories that never sell, what else do I have to do? <laughs> Tell me, what does your husband say about all your activity? Oh, he thinks I should be Commandant of the Corps. Cease firing! Bolts to the rear, senior chambers are clear. All the men have fired the high angle position, sir. Okay, Sergeant, put them through the standing position now. We did that, sir. Oh, you're right. Look, Sergeant, take over here. Secure this area and march the men on in. I've got to attend to something back at headquarters. Aye, aye, sir. Carry on, Sergeant. All right, secure the firing line. Release up the ammo boxes, get your gear and fall in. Hold on, up. It's all here and explained. My desk should be so organized. Well, I know you're busy, hon. I won't keep you. Good luck. I guess you think I'm making a mistake by resigning my commission as Mrs. Second Lieutenant? Oh, I don't know. The apprentice years are never easy. Mine were fun. I, I wouldn't have traded them for anything. You think it's me, then, and not the system? I love it here, Chan. If you don't, if you're sure that's what it is. Good luck, hon. Bye, dear. Bye, Martha. Carry on, Private. <coughs> I want an outside line, please. Please excuse me, Private. Hello. Jan? 
Yes? Bill, I've got to talk to you. About what? Listen, I heard... Look, Jan, don't do anything you'll be sorry for, all right? I'm already sorry about a lot of things. But I'm leaving and that's all there is to it. Won't you let me talk to you first? I'll be on a two o'clock bus for L.A. if you'd like to say goodbye. Jan, Jan, you, you, you're not taking time to think this thing through. You know that. There's nothing more to think about. Look, I'll call you back. Jan. Yeah. Your sergeant told me you were here. I don't know exactly how I'm supposed to act. I, I've never had a wife leave me before. Barry, everything's gonna be all right, okay? It, it better be. You take good care of her, you hear? What's the matter with you? She's leaving you, yes, but she's not coming to me. She's just sick and tired of the whole thing, that's all. Uh, you don't think for one minute she'd want to repeat it with me, do you? You take care of her. Now, I'm not taking care of anybody. You got that? And I'm a little sick and tired of being put on the spot like this. Now, I admit Jan and I are friends, yes. But I didn't make up her mind for it. I'm a little sick and tired of getting hung up like this. Now, if you just simply listen to me for one second, maybe you can I'll find out something. I'm tired of listening. Now, Barry! Is Get out of the car, Jan. Uh, here, look, lady. I want you to look at it. I want you to look at it close. Come on. That's the fourth time Barry's line. platoon has done that exercise here. this week. Get up in line. Let's get back in the car, Jan. I said back in the car. I want you to watch this. We interfered with his work enough already. All right. I've seen the show. Now take me back. No. I want you to sit there and watch it a while. I want you to see what a glamorous, romantic life your husband leads while you sit at home being bored, poor little Jan. That's enough, Bill. Is it? You know you nearly had me fooled? I almost got carried away with Jan's problems. I actually believe she was the only one in the entire world who really had them. I'm gonna tell you something. You're married to a second lieutenant lady, but you don't seem to know very much about them or what they are. Look, Jan, right now, right there. They get the toughest jobs. They eat dirt and they sweat and they knock their brains out each and every day. Not because I love it. Because at this time, it just happens to be their job. Sure, I know Barry comes home tired. It's all right if he eats a little dirt. 
But if you can't have cake, you want to quit. No, Bill. It's not that way. Isn't it? You know something, Jan? I'm not so sure I like you anymore. You're quitting on a contract because it turned out to be a lot tougher than you ever thought it would be. I tried. You're no expert on marriage. I never said I was. But I recognize whining and rationalizing and quitting when I see it. There's a lot more, Jan. All that time you sat at home being bored, did you ever read the newspapers? Did you ever notice what was really going on in this world today? Sure, Barry's working hard because he's worried like all the rest of us. And he knows if big trouble breaks out, he has to put up his life and 42 others just like him right on the line. Don't try and scare me, Bill. I'm not trying to scare you, Jan. I'm trying to show you. If you can't match what Barry's putting up, then... Then I don't know, you... Maybe you shouldn't run. Well, uh, there's still time to catch it in Laguna if you really want to. <laughs> I'd like to go home. Fine, sissy. I guess you know that Jan is leaving the committee. Yes, Martha Amory called me about that. You and I will be working together. I'm taking Jan's place. I think that's fine, sissy. I think the sooner we review the details, the better. As a matter of fact, Ellie Holtman dropped me off and I don't have my car. You could drive me home and then we could talk. You could stay to dinner. I have a new policy concerning social engagement, sissy. No dinner with married women unless the entire regiment is present. Well, that's a nasty thing to say. Well, the least you could do if you're a gentleman is make sure that I have a ride home. Oh. 